It's the turn of a new year, 2020. And for us all, it's an opportunity to start afresh, whether or not we succeeded in the outgun year. For many career and business people, it would be a time to take stock and close skills gaps in their work and lives so they can lead the lives they've always dreamed of. The Bank of Industry is big on capacity building and knowledge sharing and is always seeking the right partnerships to empower as many Nigerians as possible towards gaining skills that engender economic success. Recently, the Bank of Industry partnered with Dr. Ibukun Awoshika to empower over a thousand young Nigerians in just one event. The live series with Ibukun Awoshika and friends was an event designed to provide mentorship and support to young people who desire to achieve life work balance and make steady and appreciable success in their careers and businesses, personal lives and of course relationships without compromising their core values. The partnership between the Bank of Industry and Mrs. Awoshika brought together some successful entrepreneurs who shared winning strategies for a balanced successful life. The Bank of Industry was lead sponsor BOI Weekly was there, and we're glad to bring you details of that program in just a moment. I'm Kaede Alayade. Welcome to the show. Have you ever imagined a time when you could apply for and get a loan from the comfort of your bedroom? Or prayed that the processing time was shorter? Well, it is now a reality with the fast and swift Bank of Industry Real-Time Online Loan Application Initiative. The BOI Online Loan Application Portal is designed to deliver access and convenience to prospecting SME customers by ensuring that applicants need not have to physically visit the bank. Applicants simply have to submit all necessary documents via the online portal with the liberty to select their preferred BOI state office wherein their applications will be processed. How it works? Simply search the keyword Bank of Industry and download your mobile app from Play Store for Android users, Blackberry App World for Blackberry users and Apple Store for iPhone users. Click on the Apply button. Click on Register to register your account. A verification link and tracking code will be sent to your registered email address. Click on the verification link to facilitate login. Once logged in, you can complete your application, submit and click on Continue to start tracking your loan application. An email will be sent to your email address confirming receipt of the application. With this initiative, BOI has reduced its loan application and processing turnaround time. Start applying for your loan right away. Bank of Industry, transforming Nigeria's industrial sector. What do I need to do? Because this is the live series with Ibukun Awoshika and friends held recently at Harbour Point, Victoria Island, Lagos. The live series is a capacity building program designed by the convener, Dr. Ibukun Awoshika, to equip young people with life and business skills so they can successfully navigate the environment without compromising their core values. This, the organizers believe, would help build a better society. Sounds pretty much like what the Bank of Industry is about, empowering Nigerians in their numbers to succeed. Little wonder the BOI threw its weight behind the project as the lead sponsor. It's a promising day out here as over a thousand existing and aspiring young Nigerian entrepreneurs seated in this room would walk away equipped with tools to succeed in their careers, personal lives and businesses. Like the program title suggests, Dr. Awoshika is not doing this alone. She's here with some of her friends who, like her, have achieved enviable success in critical areas of life and business and have earned the right to mentor younger travelers on the same journey. Setting the tone for the event, the convener, Dr. Awoshika, explains how strategic each of the session is. The reason that we do this is simply to change the conversation, change the narrative, impact lives, 
impact the way you think. Because you see, the way you think affects the decisions that you make. And the decisions that you make every day determines the life that you have. The point of each session for me was to take critical components of life that I know will affect your future. The first plenary with my friends was to address certain things that limit people being able to move forward. I can't do this because I don't have this. It's about the decisions that you make. The first plenary is a discussion about stepping out of paid employment, referred to here as the golden handcuffs, to pursue dreams as entrepreneurs. It's steered by the trio of Mrs. Yewande Zakios, CEO of Eventful, Dr. Omobala Johnson, a former Honorable Minister of Information Technology, and Mrs. Bola Adishola, MD CEO, Standard Chartered Bank Limited, Nigeria. It's also important to note that all three are co-founders and former chairpersons of an organization called Women in Business, also known as WIMBIS. As the curtain raiser, Mrs. Yoandis Zakias says, for entrepreneurs to succeed, they must be driven by a higher purpose than money. If you're feeling a sense of frustration in your workplace now, if you're feeling a sense of boredom, if you're no longer fulfilled, if Sunday morning you are depressed because you're going to work on Monday morning, time has come. But then the why, let me go quickly to the why. Why would you want to leave? Why would you want to leave that amazing job with all the perks and go into this unknown terrain? A lot of people think it's about making money. If that's your first reason, please go back to your job. Because it's never about making money. Because if it's about making money, it's not going to be sustainable for you. Money making cannot be your first reason for living your career and starting your own business. I think the most important thing for anybody who is going to leave their career and start a new business is that you must want to be a problem solver or a solution provider. If you don't have that desire in your heart, then your business is not going to go very far because there must be a key interest. There must be something that gets your goat. There must be something about your society, about life, that honestly you just know if somebody can fix it, it's me. And you just have to get up and do it. So it's really, really important that you know the why for leaving. It must be something that must be adding value to people. It must be something that must make a change somehow to people. It must be something that must be impacting lives, whether the lives of those you will employ in the course of growing your business or the lives of those who your services or your goods will come to. So I think it's very, very important that you understand the why of living your business. But I just want to mention some key points, things you need to look out for, some characteristics you must have or you must develop for you to be able to stay the course when you're going to leave the golden handcuffs and go out. The first thing is courage. If you don't have courage, then it's going to be very hard for you to make that move. And not only a courage in terms of, I want to do something that is, um, you know, I, I'm not really sure how it's going to go, but I'm going to go out and do it. You must also have the courage of your convictions. Passion. Without passion, you have no business in entrepreneurship. You must be absolutely passionate about what you're going to do. You have to be a visionary. If you cannot look ahead, if you cannot see beyond the curve, if you cannot see what others cannot see, it is very, very hard for you to go into entrepreneurship. On her part, Dr. Omobala Johnson talks about leveraging time for success in life and business. How do you begin to say yes to things that matter and no to things that don't? Very, very important. When people ask you to do things, you've got to be able to ask certain questions before you say yes. And I can promise you that the older you get, the more accomplished you are, the more successful you are, the more times you're going to be asked to do things. And you can't say yes to everything, because if you say yes to everything, you'll do many things for other people, but nothing for yourself. For me, it's a number of things. The most important thing is, who is asking? The second question is, what are they asking me to do with my time? And the third thing that I ask myself is that, what's in it for me? You've got to ask yourself that question. If I do this particular thing, I, you know, I, it may not be a, a talk like this, maybe get going, going somewhere with a friend, doing something for somebody, whatever it is, what is in it for me? Because there's always got to be something in it for you. Yes, it's true about sacrifice and all of that, but at the end of the day, you've got to take some value out of it. You must get to the point, when you start a business, 
Look at how much you want to pay yourself. Divide that into 12. Divide that into four. Divide it into seven. You have a daily cost of your time. So if I'm going after a contract or a service or whatever it is that is one million naira, and you have a sense for the margin that you want to make, you must, from the get-go, say that I will not spend more than this amount of time chasing after this particular service or this contract. Because if I do this for every single contract, I'm not going to make any money. Take away all the costs. I know Instagram and all this online business doesn't really allow you to think about costs. But think about all the revenue, the petrol in your car that you used to. And these are things I used to have to account for. The fuel that you spend getting to the client, the air ticket, the money you give somebody to take a taxi on a car or whatever it is goes to the client. All of that, you've got to put it all together. Add it all up as your costs. Look at your revenue and see whether or not your business is making money. Always have time in your consciousness and always put a value on your time. Because if you don't put a value on your time, people will waste it. You will waste it. And at the end of the day, you have nothing to show for it. So that's very, very important um, for, from a time point of view. But the next question is how to achieve goals despite hurdles and setback. Mrs. Bola Adishala provides answers. What is important is that um, is, is not whether these hurdles will come or the setbacks, uh, but our state of mind and how we react and how we deal uh, with them. Um, Many of the challenges in life um, are, are those that we often can't anticipate or we, don't, we, we know they may happen, but we don't know when um, they will happen. But our approach is what determines whether we succeed or whether we fail, whether we deal with it or quit. Some, many times, God doesn't give us the luxury of explaining anything to us. He doesn't even owe us any explanation. But what we do know, and I'm speaking from my own faith now, is that he's not going to put us through more than he has equipped us for. And I believed, even looking at certain aspects of um, my career, some of the hurdles I had had in the past, how I suddenly just realized that the equipment for success was there around me. But it was for me to pick it up, run with it, and use it. I think many times when we you know, have problems, we come across challenges, we internalize as opposed to externalizing. Of course, you have to internalize so you reflect, you know what, what's going on, but it's also important to reach out to people who've been along the journey before, people who are going through their own challenges. How do they cope? How, what sort of support structures are around one? One thing that I was very clear about was that I didn't want any pity party, and so I totally deleted any detractors. I deleted anybody who was going to you know, depress my spirit, depress my soul. Of course, I would have my own quiet moments, but I avoided anybody who made it the first, you know, question. Have you ever imagined a time when you could apply for and get a loan from the comfort of your bedroom or prayed that the processing time was shorter? Well, it is now a reality with the Fast and Swift Bank of Industry Real-Time Online Loan Application Initiative. The BOI Online Loan Application Portal is designed to deliver access and convenience to prospecting SME customers by ensuring that applicants need not have to physically visit the bank. Applicants simply have to submit all necessary documents via the online portal with the liberty to select their preferred BOI state office wherein their applications will be processed. How it works? Simply search the keyword Bank of Industry and download your mobile app from Play Store for Android users, BlackBerry App World for BlackBerry users and Apple Store for iPhone users. Click on the Apply button. Click on Register to register your account. A verification link and tracking code will be sent to your registered email address. Click on the verification link to facilitate login. Once logged in, you can complete your application, submit and click on Continue to start tracking your loan application. An email will be sent to your email address confirming receipt of the application. With this initiative, BOI has reduced its loan application and processing turnaround time. Start applying for your loan right away. Bank of Industry, transforming Nigeria's industrial sector. Keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping.
In the second plenary, participants are encouraged to leverage technology, artificial intelligence, data and insights to improve business operations as these would help them solve problems more efficiently and provide better value. The thought now talk about um, speaking to people building businesses is that in the age of technology, there is nothing like small business because your business is as big as you think. Today, we have Fentivo's office in Lagos, but we serve every state in Nigeria. And as a matter of fact, we started shipping outside the country. It's not on the website, but customers will log in from Ghana, and they will chat with people on the website to say, oh, I want to print. Can you guys ship to Ghana? And then they will get sent an invoice, and they will, they will make their payment via card payment, and it will ship to them. So we're already doing that. Um, finally, you don't have any option. You have to scale with technology. Because the people, that, the, people, the people buying from you are all technology driven. And it's going to become more of that as we, as we move forward. If you are not using technology to scale your business, your competition is doing it. And they, you are putting more money on the table um, for, for, your, for your competition. If you understand the technology, even if you can't build it yourself, you are a professional in this space, right? Which means that you have valuable knowledge that can contribute into the AI, into um, the blockchain. So for example, in the legal field, there is now AI available that can predict the outcome of a case. So you put certain parameters inside and it will tell you you have 50% chance of winning this case or you have 20% chance of winning this case, right? A lawyer would not be able to actually give you that knowledge because this piece of AI pulls data, historical data from cases all over the world that are similar to the case that you're putting in and spitting out the information of what the possibility is or probability is of this case being successful or not, right? There were lawyers involved in building this. There were psychologists involved in building this, right? So it's really about thinking, how can you create solutions that can automate certain areas of auditing, for example, right? What are the key areas of auditing that could be automated and could be automated very quickly, that require machine learning, that require intelligence, that could be um, used with some sort of like blockchain underlying it, right? So I think it's really understanding the foundations, right? What are the technologies that are available to me? But it's really more important to figuring out how do I solve problems in my sector, right? Using technology as opposed to, oh, I'm just going to go and learn about AI and then I'm going to now jump into AI. It doesn't really work like that. As a progressive development finance institution, the Bank of Industry is already funding tech initiatives in Nigeria and is positioned to do more. But we're beginning to take, pay a lot of attention to the tech, to the startups, you know, to the companies that are going to define the future, that are going to you know, drive you know, disruption that are going to take place in the future. And so there are two things we're doing. One is putting funding on the table, making funding available. You know, in a not too traditional, not too conventional way that, you know, if you're a startup, you meet certain criteria, you will have access to funding. I'm going to talk a lot about that, you know, later on. The second thing is that we're also doing what we call CSR, you know, creating, trying to expand the technology ecosystem. Um, specifically what we're doing in that regard is that, uh, you know, we are beginning to, we, 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 this year, this particular year, We've, we've, we've set up about, we've funded the setup of about uh, two technology hubs. One in Lagos in Aja, for those of you who are very familiar around that area, as well as another one in Bayelsa. And we've seen, what we've seen this done is to be able to galvanize, you know, entrepreneurs who are within particular location, bring them together, enhance the ecosystem, build the ecosystem, make, make it possible for them such that, you know, they are able to rub on, of it, on, on each other and go through various programs that our partners are putting in place, such that at the end of that program, they will have access to funding. And uh, the plan is that in the coming years, you know, this will be, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to roll this out across, you know, across the country. After all is said and done, people must take action. The Bank of Industry also showed the participants how SMEs can leverage on the bank's low interest rates to grow their businesses. Many of you follow Bank of Industry, Central Bank of Nigeria, Nexim Bank, and all the developmental financial institutions in Nigeria. How many people? By indication, there's a problem. If you do not know where you can get your loans, if you do not know where you can get assistance, if you do not know 
how policy makers work in Nigeria and the policies of government. How are they going to function? He said it all. Please make the websites of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Bank of Industry, and all the DFIs your friends. Please, there are endless opportunities in parastatals and agencies of government for the people of Nigeria. Now, for Bank of Industry, it is a marriage with development. It is an opportunity. We are an implementing arm of government. Therefore, we give loans practically to businesses. We give loans to manufacturers, to processors, to producers, and some services. So if you have businesses working, if you have ideas but you haven't implemented, your business is new, or your business is ripe for expansion, BOI is your friend. The participants got the opportunity to ask questions and are glad to leave the venue with answers, equipping them to take on the world. This has been the icing of the cake for me in terms of how to set my goals for 2020. You know, starting with understanding time management, starting with understanding how to build boundaries around your life to maximize your own um, personal growth and also just understanding and being true to yourself. Um, so I, from the first um, plenary session, I think that I kind of gotten the answers that I need for 2020. So as you can imagine, I'm very fulfilled. I think it's been quite amazing, especially when you look at the diversity of the uh, mentors that you have on ground. You know, you have people from the banking sector, from consulting, even from um, from the government, even from the public sector. And I think for, for me, that that's true value because there's the bits and pieces that of knowledge that each of these people bring to the table that I feel have been relevant through the course of the conversations I've had with each of them. So it's been quite interesting. Beaming with a sense of fulfillment after the event, Mrs. Awoshika explained why she decided to host the live series and why it was critical to partner with the Bank of Industry. In my life, I get um, a lot of demands from a lot of young people for mentorship and um, knowledge sharing and all of that. And I realized that in reality, if we want to build our country, we have to build one life at a time. And um, there are many social issues that are conflicts for the next generation between the emerging world and our cultural, traditional values. And except we find a way to unknot the knots and help the younger people to find how to navigate, we will have a problem. So the, um, the live series with the Bukmawashika is focused on your business and career development, your personal growth, and on relationships. Those are the three things that we, we anchor the entire program on. We, we had a session where Bank of Industry was able to talk about the tech hubs that they've set up because that was within our tech uh, plenary. Because technology is an enabler. It's a tool that cuts across every industry. And because this is the enterprise edition, we wanted uh, people to see all the things they must pay attention to in terms of building businesses for the future and how to enhance their businesses of now. And, um, and ties to that is also the talk about how to um, have financing or funding options for their business. Bank of Industry has various funds applicable across different industrial sectors. And uh, a lot of uh, young business people do not even know what is available, or even medium or big businesses as well. So knowledge is power. So this, with this platform, they've also been able to share a lot of uh, information about the great things that they do as a bank of industry, which would help to grow the businesses of a lot of people that are here, as well as benefit uh, uh, the individuals who want to go into business. The bank of industry would stop at nothing to ensure that Nigerian entrepreneurs and businesses get the adequate support they need to thrive, whether in terms of capacity building or financial support. BOI is happy to do this either independently 
or by leveraging partnerships, as we have seen on the show today. To be clear, the Bank of Industry supports businesses that create value and provide jobs, whether in manufacturing and production activities, agro-processing, solid minerals, information technology, oil and gas, and the creative industry, just to name a few. Make a move today and let the Bank of Industry support you. Visit any of their offices closest to you or log on to their website at boi.ng. You can apply for BOI loans online. Simply download the BOI SME Loan app from the Google Play Store and follow the instructions. Now feel free to tweet at me at KAY Alliant for further inquiries. Watch previous editions of the show on YouTube.com by typing BOI Weekly in the search area. And that will be our show for today. Many thanks for watching. I am Kaede Alayade. Compliments of the season.